to this meet you guys at the Lady Vaishnava Podcast Review presented by Victoria Iyok, aka myself. Thank you so much for joining us. If you've been listening to us regularly, um, thank you. And God bless you for listening regularly. But if you are joining us for the very first time, thank you too. And God bless you. Please do not forget to subscribe and follow this podcast so that you are going to be... Um, edified daily by God's grace. So as usual, let us start with prayer. Father Lord, God Almighty, King of Glory, we thank you so much because your word is true and it cannot fail. Help us to decide ourselves that we are going to believe your word for ourselves. In Jesus Christ's name, Amen. Okay, today we are talking about God's Word. And the title of today's message is God's Word is Sure. God's Word is Sure. And we are going in the Gospels. Today we are going in the book of Mark. I'm reading from the New International Version. Mark chapter 11 verses 23 to 24. Mark chapter 11, verse 23 to 24. Is everybody there? Let us read. New International Version. Jesus is speaking here. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in your heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. This was the first scripture. Now we are going to Mark chapter 10, verse 13 to verse 31. Mark chapter 10, 13 to 31, still from the New International Version. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to find out if it had any fruit. When he reached it, he found nothing but leaves because it was not the season for figs. Then he said to the tree, May no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard him say it. On reaching Jerusalem, Jesus entered the temple courts and began driving out those who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves, and would not allow anyone to carry merchandise through the temple courts. And as he taught them, he said, Is it not written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of robbers. The chief priest and the teachers of the law heard this and began looking for a way to kill him, for they feared him, because the whole crowd was amazed at his teaching. When evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree without from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cast has withered. Have faith in God, Jesus said. Truly, I tell you. If anyone says to this mountain, Go throw yourself into the sea and does not doubt in your hearts, but believes that they, what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And when you stand praying, if you hold anything against anyone, forgive them, so that your Father in heaven may forgive you your sins. Uh, now we are going to... That was Mark chapter 11, verse 6. 13 to 25 and we're going now to Mark chapter 10 verse 13 to 31 Mark chapter 10 verse 13 to verse 31 People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them but the disciples rebuked them When Jesus saw this he was indignant He said to them let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good, Jesus answered, no one is no one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony, you shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was born. Jesus looked at him and loved him. 
One thing you lack, he said, go sell everything you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. And this man's face fell. He went away sad because he had great wealth. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With man it is impossible, with God nothing, but not with God. All things are possible with God. With man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Then Peter spoke up, We have left everything to follow you. Truly I follow you, Jesus replied, No one who has left home, or brothers, or sisters, or mother, all father, all children, all fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in the present age, homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and fields, along with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last ones. So, as scriptures, let me correct what I first said. We read Mark chapter 11, verse 23 to, verses 23 to 24. Then we read the whole passage from Mark chapter 11, verses verse 12 verse 13 to verse 25 and in Mark chapter 10 verse 13 to verse 31 so this is what we read today this is the word of the Lord thanks be to God amen so um as uh, Pastor Gary Blake or Apostle Gary Blake usually says like you have to decide that you will that whatever is written in God's word that you believe it because the first thing is your foundation you have to believe God's word. If you don't believe God's word, then you will not save, right? If you don't, if you don't believe God's word, then you, because it's because of what the word says, and because you believe in what the word says, that you are saved. If you don't believe in God's word, you cannot inherit the promise because you do not believe. So the first thing that you have to decide is that God's word is the absolute and only authority. Whatever is saying anything different from the word is a lie. The authority in your life, like the absolute authority in your life, should not be what. This person said what your friend said, what your sister said, what your sibling said, what your husband said. It should be what the word of God says. Because your husband can be wrong, your parents can be wrong, your siblings can be wrong, but God can never be wrong. God can never lie. God is not a human being that he could lie. Some people at times read scriptures and they're like, this is impossible. This is a lie. But it's not a lie. God can never lie. First thing that you have to keep in mind that God never lies. God the Father does not lie. Jesus Christ does not lie. The Holy Spirit does not lie. So Jesus himself said, If you say to a mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and you do not doubt in your heart, but believe that those things that you say will be done, you will have whatever you say. This is Jesus, and Jesus never lies. First thing, this is the foundation that you have to have in your mind, that God never lies. So whatever he wrote in his word is the absolute truth. If you start from there, all else will follow. We, the thing is, unfortunately, the devil wants to discredit the word of God. And that's what this, that's the first thing he did when he tempted Adam and Eve, when he tempted Eve specifically. He came and he said, did God really say? Did God really say? The devil will always question God's word to try to transform it, turn it, change it into something it's not, and try to make you believe that God lied. God never lies. This is the very first foundation that you have to have in your mind. When the devil will come and try to make you like doubt scripture, you say, no, God's word is true and it cannot fail. God never lies. It's the very first foundation. Because the Bible says that we shall live by faith and not by sight. That the just shall live by faith and not by sight. So this is what I wrote here. Mark chapter 11 verse 23 to, verse 23 to 24. So I went a little bit into like... The Hebrew and the Greek and all the like. Um, so, uh, for verily I say unto you that whatso whosoever, when it says whosoever, it includes me, it includes you, shall say unto this mountain. By the way, he was not just saying because sometimes people come to the scripture and say that Jesus was talking about spiritual mountains, like addictions, like like financial problems. That he was not saying figuratively. Only he meant like really a mountain. How do I know that he means a mountain? We read the whole scripture. He spoke to a fig tree. He spoke to a tree. Jesus was used to speaking to nature, natural things, and to see them obey him. So he didn't just mean like the financial problem that you have or like the issue that you have with your husband or your child or your brother or whatever. He actually, or your wife, 
Why did I just say husband? The issue that you have with whoever, whatever, he actually meant a real mountain. Like he does, he did not mean just figuratively, but even literally, like a real mountain, a physical mountain that you can touch. Like Pastor Chris Oyakilome, he usually talks about the fact that he had he had his dad. At times he would go on holidays at his dad's home and he did his dad's cars would always be getting bad and he would tell his dad, Dad, speak to your cars, like tell your cars to walk. Tell your cars to walk. Uh, I, 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 and his dad was saying that it was so strange to him. But so he kept telling him, like, prophesy, speak to your cars. And his dad started applying it and his cars came back to life one by one, you see. So so Jesus was not just talking about figuratively a mountain. He was talking about any physical thing. You can speak to it. There's this thing that my mom does. I don't know where she learned it. But, like, when she misplaces an object, she would say... She will speak to the object. She does not see. She does not know, know what it is. She speaks to the thing from afar and she says, where are you? Like something like, I'm looking for you. Where are you? And not after long, she finds it. You speak to things. Actually, you you have authority in the name of Jesus. Like, let me not explain it too much. You have authority in the name of Jesus. And I started applying it to my misplaced keys and stuff. I would just say, I'm looking for you. Keys, where are you? Where are you? And I find them. Like, seriously, speak to stuff. You have authority. Speak to stuff, okay? So, where was I? So, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, say, you use your mouth, okay? God spoke things into existence. If we see this world, it's because God spoke things into existence. You don't just stay there and keep everything in your heart and your mind. You speak it. So, you say to the mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt. The word doubt in the Strong's Concordance it's the word 1,252, which means to separate thoroughly, to withdraw from, to oppose, to hesitate, to differ. In his heart, to what 2,588 thoughts, feelings, mind. So basically, to doubt means like you, like you already said one thing, for example, but in your heart you are saying the opposite. You are hesitating. You are opposing the actual idea for which you were standing for. In your so you say one thing and you're thinking another one, or you think one thing and saying another. You're doubting. So, um, but shall believe what 4,100 pistol have to believe to have faith in God, to commit to God, to entrust it to God, that those things which he says shall come to pass shall have it to have, uh, is so me, I don't know if I read it well, but anyway, 2,071, what you have that you receive it, you have, you receive whatsoever you say. So, um, let us come back to the word. Pistol or the word believe. That one is a Greek word, 4,100, to have faith in God, to commit it to God. I also made a study on this word, on the, on the Hebrew word for believe. The Hebrew word for believe is actually Aman. Aman means to stand firm till the end. And doesn't it go in line with scriptures which say, if you believe till the end, you shall receive the promise? The word Aman or the word to believe in Hebrew actually means that you stand firm. You stand firm. It means that if God said it, you stand firm on it. No matter what's happening, you say, uh-uh, this is what God said. I'm standing firm. I'm believing this. I'm holding on to this. And you do not give up. You do not give up today. You do not give up tomorrow. You do not give up till you receive what you are believing God for. Okay? So, if by faith, if God says that by faith you can move a mountain, imagine the size of a mountain. Imagine a huge mountain. If God himself says that you can move that physical mountain, a huge mountain. How much more a tumor? Imagine a tumor is small in size compared to a mountain, right? How much more a tiny little virus, hashtag coronavirus or any other virus, it is so, so small as compared to a mountain, right? How much more an invisible thought? If God says you can move the big just with you speaking and believing. How much more the small? How much more the small? So I believe, therefore I speak. This is what the word of God invites us to do. So this is just an invitation today. Like, let us start believing, okay? Let us be real. If Jesus said we can do it, then we can do it. Let us start believing and stand firm and actually do the things he said we should do. If he said we can move a big, 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 big mountain just with our words, how much more tumor? How much more cancer? How much more small, tiny bacteria or virus? How much more? We can do it. 
because he said we can do it, we can do it, and he never lies. So we can do it. And I'll end with this quote from Smith Wigglesworth. All the impossibility is with us when we measure God by the limitations of our unbelief. All the impossibility is with us when we measure God by the limitations of our unbelief. Let us pray. Father Lord, God Almighty, King of Glory, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we thank you because you are faithful, you are powerful, you live in us, and your word is true. Your word is absolutely true. So we stand, we 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 stand by faith and we decide that from this day forward that we are not going to like get desperate when circumstances get complicated, but we are going to know that it is it may be impossible to man, but it's possible to God, and we have faith in you. So we are going to speak the word. We are going to say it out loud. We are going to command circumstances in our lives, and they will align because you said that we can do it. And if you said it, it is true. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And I use this moment to pray since we specifically thought about tumors and cancer today. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, you who is listening to this and that you're suffering from a tumor, cancer, any, any like, uh, uh, even bacteria, viruses, whatever, I speak to that thing. You die now in the name of Jesus Christ. You have no authority and no right to remain in that body. I tell you right now, if it is a tumor, you shrink and you disappear without leaving any negative consequence. You disappear. Cancer, same thing. If it's a virus, bacteria, any single parasite or entity that's not supposed to be there, I speak to you right now. You die. I do not negotiate with you. You die and you disappear and you obey now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Be healed and made whole right now in Jesus Christ's name. I'm waiting for your testimonies. God bless you. Do not forget to share this with whoever may need to listen to it. Whoever needs healing, whoever needs advice, whoever needs direction, just send it to them. You may not know. God may speak to them like through this while you did not know that they actually really needed it. And also, you have my links to social media. I am always open to praying for whoever needs prayer. So like, text me, call me, write to me. I am available. God bless you. Bye-bye.